Hello, welcome to the Thursday, March 12th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. First of all, a little bit of an update and clarification correction about the mystery SMB version 3 vulnerability that I mentioned yesterday. Not actually a lot of news here. We still just have the Microsoft security advisory to go by. Now, one mistake I made yesterday, and thanks for Rob to correcting me here on Twitter. I mentioned that this vulnerability is similar to Blue Keep. Well, I got the vulnerabilities mixed up here. Blue Keep is the RDP vulnerability. This is really more like Eternal Blue, which was the SMB version one vulnerability. And there is a CVE number for this vulnerability, CVE 2020-0796. So other than that, not really a lot about it. Uh, there are a couple attempts uh, to name the vulnerability. I've seen Corona Blue uh, being used or SMB Ghost, but uh, not sure if I really like either name. There are a couple of scanners uh, that people release to detect if you are vulnerable. Now, what they are looking for here is that you are supporting SMB version 3.1.1 and that you have compression enabled. Now, SMB compression has actually been available uh, back uh, in SMB 1.0. There is also SMB protocol acceleration. Sometimes the two words are sort of used a little bit uh, interchangeable, I believe. But uh, for this vulnerability, only Windows 10 is vulnerable and Windows Server version 1903 and 1909. Also, that's uh, for Windows 10, it's version 1903 and 1909 that are vulnerable. Of course, it's not 100% clear if some older versions may be vulnerable, but aren't explicitly sort of pointed out by Microsoft. Now, the workaround I told you about yesterday remains. It's essentially disabling uh, this uh, compression feature. Uh, go by Microsoft's um, guidance here. I've seen a couple of uh, sort of third-party write-ups and such that use a slightly different and likely incorrect uh, registry key here. So go directly uh, to uh, the Microsoft advisory for the right registry key. But other than that, uh, well, of course, uh, coronavirus is still in everybody's mind. There are quite a number of sort of reports uh, I've seen from other sites about malware and phishing and such uh, that takes advantage of uh, the coronavirus. We haven't really seen a lot of this, really just a lot of spam. If you see anything else, let us know. But I think uh, so far the phishing in the malware is not really all that terribly common. So the attackers may still sort of be waiting for a little bit more of the hype and so to build up uh, to uh, then really strike uh, in sort of mass emails uh, with uh, these uh, tricks. Cyber Reason found some malware that emulates the Johns Hopkins map. That map, you may have seen it, uh, does sort of map globally uh, where all the coronavirus cases are. The map is legitimate, but in this case, it's the Acer Ralt uh, malware that actually sort of borrows that visual in order to trick you to install uh, malware. Apple apparently does not allow any coronavirus coronavirus related uh, software in its app store. Now, as far as Google is concerned, the Android uh Play Store apparently had an application that claimed to test you for the coronavirus. That's of course not possible. And uh, it also had some location tracking code and was published uh, by a company that's often sort of put uh, together with the Iranian government. That application has since been removed from the official Google Play Store. But who needs fancy new scams if, well, old stuff still works? Xavier came across something. Well, it's actually a bit different, uh, but uh, nothing really sort of attaching to current news. It's an email that's attempting to spread the ancient Tesla malware, and it claims to be sort of a 
fake uh, specification notification that uh, claims to come from Canon or a Canon retailer uh, trying uh, to sell you a Canon EOS camera. So fairly specific actually the particular lure being used here and uh, comes with the usual SIP attachment and also a link that then directs you to a website that kind of looks like a legitimate uh, Canon EOS uh, specification sheet. I assume it's actually uh, genuine that they just copied the data and that sheet from some Canon website and that's then via links being used to trick you to install additional malware. Well and that's it for today so thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.